how an American destroyer ended up flying the red hammer and sickle flag of the USSR during the Cold War. And before I start, may I ask that if you know someone who might like to hear my stories, my memories, please share this video with them. Uh, it helped to grow the channel and uh, get me a few more subscribers. So, uh, thanking you in anticipation. It was 1959 and I was a cadet on board the MV Require along with up to 31 other cadets. And that's me up there. The ship was owned by a British company but named the New Zealand Shipping Company. We carried general cargo to the USA, New Zealand and Australia and brought frozen cargo back. This story relates to a bit of mischief that I got up to in Boston, USA. Like most young lads we got up to mischief on occasions and as cadets we like to collect souvenirs like fancy flags <laughs> and other things off other ships. Our ship was berthed in the nearest merchant berth to the USA's Charleston Naval Dockyard in Boston. Just a few metres across the water lay an old sailing ship, the USS Frigate Old Ironsides, or more correctly named USS Constitution. She boasted a good number of very fancy flags and a fellow cadet and I decided we'd like one. For two nights we took turns at keeping watch but decided it was a bad idea because the vessel was floodlit all night and there were people around. So if we couldn't take a flag maybe we could give them one. It's custom for a ship of one nation visiting another nation to fly from the starboard cross tree the national flag of the nation being visited. It's called a courtesy flag. In the flag locker of our ship were the national flags of all the countries we might visit, including two red hammer and sickle flags of the USSR, Russia. The Cold War was well and truly underway, and the Americans were worried about the Russians, and the Russians were worried about the Americans. We'll give them a Russian flag, we decided. Whilst we've been keeping watch on old Ironsides at night, we noticed that about 200 metres across the water was a World War II destroyer, number 535, called the USS Miller. She was not floodlit, and that part of the dockyard was quiet at night. <coughs> I can't remember if I won or lost the toss, but it was me that ended up with the task of raising the Russian flag on the USS Miller. Apart from the flag I also took with me a few sheets of Bronco toilet paper. Those old enough to remember that dreadful stuff will recall it was hard and waterproof and just right for the use to which it would be put this night. On each sheet I wrote just think. I tied the flag around my waist and shoved the toilet paper into my swimming trunks. At the dead of night I climbed down a wharf ladder and swam across the docks. I used the breaststroke so as to be as quiet as possible. With very little difficulty I got onto the wharf and onto the USS Miller. Once on board it was easy to find my way to the flag deck at the base of the mast. I freed a flag halyard and attached the top of the Russian flag to it. I did not attach a halyard to the bottom of the flag so it would not, would not be too simple to pull down. I hoisted the flag to the top of the mast. Then I made my way to the command bridge, that's a wheelhouse on a motion ship, and stuck the sheets of Bronco toilet paper in several prominent places like the radar screen, the compass, etc. before swimming back to the Rakaia. My fellow cadet and I then sat and waited until daybreak to see what would happen. Day broke and so did panic in the dockyard. I have never seen so many flashing blue lights 
and people running everywhere. We laughed. We had timed the event carefully. It took place during the night before we were due to depart around mid-morning. We had prepared a letter addressed to the commander of the base, telling us telling who had done it and saying that we would look, for, look forward to a bit of fun retaliation at our next meeting. The claim was about to lift away the gangplank. I ran down and gave the letter to one of the dock workers asking him to deliver it to the base. We never did meet them again whilst I was on the ship and although I'm sure my captain must have been made aware of it, nothing was ever said. I like to think that he thought it was funny too. For years I thought the matter had been forgotten. Then in 2003 I received an email. The fellow cadet had been with me on watch those two nights, had traced me through Friends of United, asking if it was me. His confusion was because at sea I was known as Bob, the abbreviation of my first name, Robert. This is what he wrote. Hello Michael, I think we were on the Rakaia at the same time. I remember a character called Bob Charters who swam across Boston Harbour to raise the Russian flag on an American destroyer in the naval dockyard. I have related this story many times over the past 40 years. I found this, have I found the same chap? After I left the sea in 1962, I joined the RAF as a pilot and have been flying in the, in the flying business ever since, both military and civil. All the best, Clive Cowie. So Clive, if you ever see this video, happy memories. I hope you're well. <coughs> so thank you very much for listening. And there will be more of my sea time stories posted, hopefully, at four o'clock or five o'clock uh, every Friday. So I hope you'll come back and, uh, and listen to more of my uh, escapades and things that happened to me when I was at sea. But for this time, bye bye. And thank you.